Hi, welcome to The Mentored Engineer. Today we're going to look at sizing cylinders and this jib cylinder that is on the uh, log splitter is a great candidate for it. What I like to do is, is lay out the geometry in a way that's very easy. I've done several methods over the years and there's no real right or wrong one. Uh, but I've settled on this one just because it is very fast, very easy to use. I can calculate the cylinder force uh, within moments usually and uh, you know just easy to, to change configurations and, and look at different things. So here I have my log splitter and I've got my, my pinpoint for the uh, cylinder that lifts the crane and then the jib arm pivot itself. I've also gone in here and made a sketch of the current arm and it's uh, 39.5 inches to the uh, to the cylinder mount, and its cylinder mount is on a two inch offset from the center line. And then another 15, 14 inches with a four inch offset to the load point. So that's the load point right there. And that's where the cylinder mounts. I've also drawn the same one, equal lengths and everything up here, so that I can show it in the fully down and fully up position. Now what I wanna do is calculate parts of my cylinder. So I'm gonna make uh, on the retracted, I'm going to make two lines to go from one point to the other. And then I'm going to do three lines on this one, and you'll see why in just a second. So Hold your horses, I guess. All right, we're going to make all three of these lines collinear, and we're going to make these two lines collinear as well. All right, we're also going to want to make these two equal. And this is going to be the dead length of our cylinder. Now, in, in uh, lots of the cylinders that I specify, um, that number is about 10 and a quarter inches. This is typical of a, a tie rod cylinder that you see on uh, agricultural equipment and whatnot. Love those cylinders, they're, they're good cylinders. All right, the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the other three of these equal, and that's gonna indicate what our stroke is on our cylinder. All right, so now we can specify by stroke and we can go to you know increments that are readily available. So in this case, uh, maybe a 24 inch uh, stroke is what we want. Well, let's look at that. That's not really a good stroke. This is very far down. I'm never gonna need it in a position that low. This doesn't go very far up. And you notice here, it's right above our pivot point. You know, there's not much, there's a quarter inch right there. Uh, so that's not good for placing it um, down. So let's look at uh, let's look at 28 inches. All right, that's getting better. You know, let's let's go back up here to our knife blade. All right, there we go. That's nine inches. That's about half the length of the log, but still we're far down here. It's it's not a very effective use of the cylinder here let's go up to and that's the the maximum case we don't really want to be operating at the maximum we want to be operating someplace in between all right so here let's look at that that's 20 inches so when we do need to lift a, a log we could be more in the middle here we don't have to worry about swinging the load under it much all right so that's that's probably pretty good um, as far as uh, cylinders i think 32 would be the next length uh, and that is not a ready available size. So we'll, we'll stay with uh, 30 inches here. Okay, now if I still don't like the, the design of it, let me get rid of that. Um, there are some other things I could change. I can change the location of this point. I can change this offset here. I can change this. So let's just look at this offset rail here real quick. All right, so as I bring this up, yeah, it's raising the height, but it's really not doing anything to this upper section here. So let's just go to back to two inches, and let's look at this one and see what happens. All right, so look at this. Um, I'm rotating it up. Okay. Really not changing this position, but it is changing this position. So let's, uh, what did I have it? 39 and a quarter. All right, so we'll just we'll just keep it there for for the sake of argument for this video. Okay, so uh, one of the things I want to do is find out what my moment arm is, and that will be you know we're lifting vertical loads here, 
so we got uh, 48.3 inches there and up here we got 26.9 all right so that'll be our our moment arms and we want to find the the force of the cylinder very easily and the, one of the things I love most about this method is it allows us to do that we can put in a dimension from the cylinder center line to the pivot point and get our moment arm. So that's a pretty good moment arm. You know, it's 48 or 30. That's really good. And then we can do the same thing on this cylinder, or that, in that position, and we get a much smaller moment arm. So right up here, you know, we're, we're lifting loads, but we don't have as good a moment arm. So let's just run some numbers. Let's say I have a theoretical load of uh, 1,000 pounds, a good round number easy for calculation. Alright, in this lower position we're going to multiply it by the 48.3 or yeah, 3031 we'll call it. Alright, and we'll divide it immediately by this 30.36 number. Alright, and that gives us a cylinder force of just under 1600 PSI. Which is very small, it's a uh, um, you know, very well sized cylinder, uh, shouldn't have any problem, you know, even a two inch bore cylinder, which is probably about the smallest cylinder you could buy, uh, shouldn't have a problem lifting that. Probably don't have to worry about buckling either in a cylinder that small, so you don't have to find a, a large rod. All right, um, now what I'm a little bit more concerned about is this upper one, because our moment arm dropped by roughly a third there. All right, so let's look at that. That's a thousand times 26.9, I'll call it 91, and then divide it by 10.43. So you automatically you can see that there's a much bigger multiplication factor. Uh, so that number is uh, just under 2600 uh, PSI, which is significantly uh, bigger from the 1600. So we went up, I'm sorry, those are pounds, uh, 2600 pounds. So, you know, about a 60% increase uh, 60 to 70 percent increase over uh, the other position. So we may want to go and play around with our geometry a little bit more and find out if there's a way to, uh, you know, maximize that uh, moment arm in the upper position. But like I said, the forces are so low that it really doesn't uh, affect as much. So I just wanted to get you the basics of how to do that and how to quickly calculate your force uh, force in the cylinder. I uh, really appreciate you watching, and I hope this was helpful to you, and hope you, it's something you can learn to uh, do in your own designs. Thank you.